Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto, and this is the Not So Serious Keto video podcast. It is the end of November slash Movember, and that means two things. First off, Movember and the beard. It's, just, it's time to make an executive decision on the beard. So for those of you who haven't watched any of my podcasts this month, Movember and guys growing facial hair is supposed to be there so that we get conversation going around men's health issues. And I've talked a little bit about men's health over the course of the past month, and I will again at the end of this podcast after the commercial break. But back to the beard, I would say that if, if I were just judging by comments, the vast majority of you seem to like the beard. I would say probably 95% of the comments I have gotten on the beard have been favorable. About 5%, not so much. And uh, I actually, I agree with the 5% that don't like the beard. I mean, I, I don't mind the look of it, <laughs> except all the, like the white hair, it just, it makes me feel a lot older. But more so than that, when I'm lying in bed and I've got my cheek on the pillow, I like to feel the pillow. When I'm hugging my grandson, I like to feel his cheek against my cheek. And instead I've got this, you know, steel wool between my cheek and his cheek or my cheek and the pillow. It's kind of itchy. I don't love it. Plus, I also find that when I have a beard or mustache, and I actually, I always, if I'm going to have one, I'm going to have the other, anything liquid I eat, there's something about the beard that just seems to be a magnet that just, you know, soup, gravy, whatever, sauce, just, it goes there. And uh, that's not my thing. So the beard will be coming off within the next day or two. So for those of you who liked it, I'm sorry. I guess you'll see it again next year come November. Also, since it is the end of November and the beginning of December, it's time for the final installment of 24 in 21. So 24 in 21, if you're not familiar with it, is my take on self-improvement for this year, 2021. Instead of doing one big New Year's resolution, I decided instead to take each month a couple of little bite-size improvements. One positive, so adding one positive thing, a habit, something like that, and remove one negative thing. That could be a time waster, an energy waster, something that is emotionally draining, just something in your life that maybe needs fixing that's a, a negative. And for me, in November, my positive, the thing that I was going to do, was create new and better thumbnails for some of my older videos, and then also determine where I probably need to take a new picture of the food, just you know, for my eventual cookbook, whenever that happens. And I think I did a pretty good job on that. I'm, I'm starting to feel like I'm upping my thumbnail game, with the obvious exception of these podcasts, which are pretty lame in terms of thumbnails. But I think some of my others, like the kitchen science one, I, I felt pretty good about that. So I've learned some more about making thumbnails and things that are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. So I, I you know, what would I give myself in a grade? I would give myself a, a solid B, maybe even a B plus. I didn't get as many done as I wanted to, but I was learning along the way. So I'm gonna say that was a good. The negative or bad thing that I wanted to get rid of was sort of a lack of security on some of my passwords. You know, I, I, I've got a scheme for passwords that I think if someone figured out, they might, might be able to figure out all of my passwords. So I got LastPass and I went through, well, I haven't gone through all of my passwords, but anything that's social media related, related to any of my websites, my business, anything financial, including anything where people could, if they got into it, order something with my information, all of that has been locked down. And fortunately, that's a good thing because I got an email from GoDaddy telling me that my account had been compromised back in September, that someone had obtained my email address, my name, my customer number, potentially my password. Fortunately, this was for a managed WordPress site that is extinct. It doesn't exist anymore. I used to have a couple of other uh, YouTube channels and also associated websites that never really went anywhere, and I just let them die and expire, and, and they're gone. So fortunately, whoever got this information, there's not anything that they can do with it, and further fortunately, I've locked everything down subsequent to that. So 
I'm feeling pretty good about my overall internet security. That was November. For December, the two things I'm looking at are, first, my positive is get back seriously into strength training. And I, I've mentioned that I was going to do that on a couple of previous months and not done a great job. So I thought about how do I lock in this habit? And I decided I'd make a video. I, it's going to be 100 days, so not just the month of December, but a 100 days which will lead up pretty close to my 54th birthday. And I'm gonna, I've taken all the pictures and measurements and, and things like that so we can do the before and after pictures and just see what sort of transformation I can make to my body over the course of 100 days. And I feel sort of like with the fingernails, you know, and stopping biting my fingernails, by putting that out there, by making that an announcement, by making it something that's gonna be visible to all of you, it's kind of like, I got to put my money where my mouth is. So positive strength training, 100 days. The negative or the wasteful thing that I need to take care of is my full-size freezer out in the garage. So I've got a stand-up freezer out in the garage for, you know, all kinds of meat. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff from my family, the non-keto stuff, French fries. Uh, I, I don't know what all's in there. But what I do know is there's too much in there, enough so that whoever went there about a week ago and opened it up, it didn't close all the way. So it is just frost everywhere, just everything coated with frost. And really what I need to do is start working my way through eating some of this stuff, do a full out inventory of what's in the freezer, start getting it eaten, and then defrost the freezer. So I don't know, would you call that a negative? Because I'm eating and I'm probably gonna be eating a lot of meat. So maybe that's it's a negative and a positive. Whatever. That's what I'm doing for December. Now it's your turn. If you've been playing along, tell me how November went for you and what are your plans for December. What's going to be your additional good habit or thing that you do? And what's going to be the negative or the wasteful or whatever? Just the, the thing you want to eliminate from your life. Let me know down in the comments below. Next up, we have Keto in the News. A story that has been showing up in my newsfeed the last couple of days from various different sources is on Shaquille O'Neal. So if you're not from the United States, Shaquille O'Neal was a very big and popular, and I don't mean just big uh, personality-wise or big well-known, but the dude is huge. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal was a basketball player in the National Basketball Association here in the United States. And the article is about how Shaq says that for the first time, I don't know if it's in his life or since college or something, but he says he can see his abs now as a result of adopting a low carb lifestyle. And I just love any time any sort of celebrity or famous personality announces that they're doing low carb. Because I think people who are not familiar with low carb, they can get behind low carb. You know, that doesn't sound threatening or scary or weird to them. If someone just says, you know, low carb, high protein, people can say, oh yeah, I, I understand that. But once you start talking keto, it seems like people get a little bit freaked out. You know, they think that we're just guzzling avocado oil or, or something like that. But it's a nice bridge step. We'll call it, we'll call it like the, the gateway to keto. And as a result, I love it when people like Shaq or Tom Brady announce that the reason that they're in the shape that they're in is because they've been doing low carb. Incidentally, on the topic of Tom Brady, Brady said that Thanksgiving is the one day he throws his diet out the window and he just goes to town. And that was not my plan for this year. My plan was to behave myself. Notice I said plan. <laughs> it started when Connor made some biscuits. It was a recipe out of Milk Street Magazine for these whipped sour cream. It's like whipped cream, sour cream biscuits. And he made them and they were beautiful and they smelled amazing. And I thought, I got to have one of these. And I did. And it was amazing and totally worth it. But then it was sort of a slippery slope. I'm like, well, as long as I ate this, I'm going to have some apple pie for dessert. And as a result, the next day, Black Friday, um, I wasn't out of ketosis fully. I was out of nutritional ketosis, but according to the Keto Mojo, I was still producing ketones. I was at a 0.2, so not fully, fully out of ketosis, but took a little bit of a hit, went up four pounds or, you know, in one day. But as of today, 
and I'm filming this on Saturday. So one day later, ketones are back up to 0.9. I've dropped two of the four pounds. I'm sure by the time you view this on Monday, I'll be back to where I was. But uh, that was my Thanksgiving. How was yours? Did you stick to the plan? Let me know. And if not, that's okay. We bounce back. I did it. You can do it. We can get right back on the keto horse and we're good to go. And with that, we're going to take a brief little ad break. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the last half of this video is going to be about men's health. And I had sent out a little bit of a query in the last podcast asking people, are you interested in me talking more about men's health? And again, the vast, vast response was yes. There were a few people, maybe three, four comments at most, where people said, no thanks, too much information, not interested. So I decided first I would save the men's health to the la to the boy, can I speak? I would save the men's health issue to the latter half of the podcast, and I'll still give you a warning if we hit sort of a TMI sort of category. And I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of TMI here, because I want to talk about it more broadly to kind of bring Movember to a close. So men's health is something that just I don't think is talked about nearly enough. At least guys, we don't tend to talk about it with one another. I suspect that women probably talk more about women's health with one another, and you all can let me know if, if that's the case, but men tend to be sort of in the dark about men's health and certainly about women's health. I think it would probably be a good thing if men understood a little bit more about what women went through on an annual or semi-annual basis. One thing I hear a lot, and I heard this especially when I worked at GE Healthcare, is that if some of these devices were used on men, they would be designed in a way that would be a lot more comfortable. And maybe that's true. I can tell you that the devices that are used on men also not enormously comfortable. And I'll, I'll address that a little bit more as we get further into this podcast. But as I was saying, men tend not to talk about men's health stuff. We'll talk about all kinds of other stuff. You know, it's sort of like that scene in Jaws where uh, was it Robert Shaw and Richard Dreyfus are talking, they're sharing like scars and stuff like that. We're very good about sharing battle stories anywhere outside of the swimsuit area. But once we start getting into that area down there, we get a little bit squeamish about talking about it. And I think we need to be more open about it. And that's, again, what Movember is all about. I think one of the reasons that men are reluctant to talk about some of these things, especially older people, people that were brought up, you know, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, is the notion of getting touched and handled and poked and prodded down in that area, there's this feeling that somehow it, it makes us less a man or something. I don't know. I mean, I look at, for example, Vince Lombardi. Vince Lombardi, he was, he was a man's man. And he said, either no one's sticking something up my ass, something like that. Apologies for the language. But um, he wound up dying of prostate cancer. Or, I'm sorry, colon cancer. And it, I don't know. I don't know if it could have been prevented. I guess it was a very, very aggressive cancer that he had. But, you know, so now you've got the Vince Lombardi Cancer Center in Milwaukee. And I guess if I were to have something named after me, I would prefer it not be the thing that killed me. Like, I don't want a cage at the zoo named, uh, you know, the Serious Keto Steve Wolfpack cage or something like that. I think you know, as we approach Christmas and like the ghost of Christmas future, what if the ghost of Christmas future had gone to Vince Lombardi and said, hey, Vince, let me show you this, the Super Bowl trophy. It's called the Vince Lombardi trophy because you won the first two Super Bowls. And over here, here's the Vince Lombardi Cancer Center. And Vince would say, whoa, did I cure cancer? No, Vince, you died of cancer. So back to the manliness thing. If we're working some power tool or something and we cut ourselves, we wouldn't hesitate to go see a doctor. If we saw some lump on our neck, we wouldn't hesitate to go see a doctor. If we had some sort of a sore on our forehead that's not healing, we wouldn't hesitate to go to a doctor. Yet we get all sort of weirded out about being touched certain places. Swimsuit area. And that's just, it's stupid. 
It's stupid that we feel that way. It's just, it's a body part. And yes, it's awkward. And yes, it can be invasive. And sometimes it can even hurt. But we do it so that we can catch potential diseases. So fellas, I'm talking to you right here specifically now. Imagine a loved one, a family member, a friend, whatever it is, and he or she steadfastly refuses to go to a doctor because they don't want to get poked or prodded or anything like this. And they wind up dying of cancer. And you found out that this could have been prevented. Had this person been willing to just go and get poked or prodded or tested, this could have been caught. This could have been fixed. How would you feel about that? Now imagine transplanting that feeling onto one of your loved ones because you weren't willing to go and get poked or prodded or deal with a few minutes of discomfort. That's why we need to talk about men's health. Now for me, my, my most recent experience is that I've had some test results come back showing a very high, for my age, PSA. And this is, tends to be an indicator of potential cancer. However, I've Googled and there are a pretty significant number of uh, false positives and false negatives that can occur from this test. So then you wind up having other tests done, like uh, ultrasound and prostate biopsy. It wasn't a whole lot of fun but it didn't show any cancer, so relief. I had an MR on my prostate. That wasn't all that bad. Noisy, but not bad. Again, no cancer. So why is my PSA high? Well, one of the things that can cause it is an enlarged prostate. Now we're gonna start easing in to a little bit of TMI. So first off, the prostate continues to grow as you age, which means if you don't have enlarged prostate, there's a chance you may at some point. So the prostate is sort of donut shaped. There we go, donut shaped. And through the hole in the donut is your urethra. I just looked at my screen here and saw myself making this gesture and I thought, wow, what if this were the thumbnail for this particular podcast? Would I get demonetized? I'm just gonna go like this and say, the urethra runs through the prostate. And as your prostate swells, it doesn't just get bigger on the outside, it gets bigger, well, narrower on the inside and can restrict the flow of urine. Now, about 20 years ago, I'm estimating, when I worked for GE Capital, there was a guy who had this problem. Same as Jim. You probably don't know him. But I would say he was in his mid-50s, late 50s, and it was really kind of weird, TMI, TMI alert, when you were in the men's room standing at a urinal next to him because he would make a lot of noises trying to go pee. There would be, you know, some grunting and, you know, these, these noises. And then he would also talk. And I think most of us, when we talk to ourselves, it's like the, the sender is here in our brain and the receiver is also in the brain. When he was talking to himself, I think he was talking downward. He was like, come on, we can do, you, you got this, you got this. Ah. And it was just really weird. And I thought to myself, I hope that never happens to me. But here we are. And let me tell you, it is not an awesome sensation. When you feel like you really, really got to go and you're standing at the toilet and nothing's happening except like the really intense feeling that you got to go, well, that's part of having an enlarged prostate. So I am going to be having surgery a week from today. So that would be, uh, what is that, the 5th or 6th, something like that, um, having surgery to basically spread open the interior of the prostate. Now, you could take drugs. In fact, right now, until I have the surgery, I'm taking Flomax, but I don't want to be on drugs for the rest of my life. One of the great things about going keto is getting off of a lot of prescription medications. So I certainly don't want to be on a new one now. You know, and every time you take a prescription medication, there's they've got some sort of side effect. It could be relatively mild or it could be more severe. And I just, I don't want to deal with that. So I'm having this surgical procedure and I'm just gonna leave it at that for right now. I'll wait until after it's done, so probably two weeks from now after it's done and I'm hopefully all recovered, and then we'll go into the TMI section where I can explain to the fellows who may be concerned 
and maybe feeling like that's something in their future that they can be prepared. Because one of the things that I have found in particular with my urologist is he hasn't really prepared me for some of these things. And I think if, if you can't have a candid conversation with your urologist about these things and what to expect, then maybe you can have a conversation with me. So that's what we'll cover in two weeks. But in summary, gentlemen, men's health and being open about men's health and discussing men's health and going and allowing yourself once or twice a year, however often it is, to be poked and, and prodded, you're doing this not just for yourself, but you're doing it for the people that you love so that you can stick around a long, long time and enjoy their company and they can enjoy your company. So to me, doing these things makes you a bigger man. So I hope I've made my point and uh, I hope you agree. If not, that's fine. That's fine too. But I've said my piece. So thanks for watching or listening.